We all know rules are meant to be broken. Rule number one in the Y14-5 standard is a good example. This rule tells us that the limits of size control the form, straightness, flatness, circularity, and cylindricity of a regular feature of size. Typically, to measure per rule one, you make a full form check at the maximum material condition, for instance, for this hole that would be at its smallest size, or 595, and then local checks to make sure it isn't too big. If it passes these checks, then the feature form must be within the limits of size. In other words, the form of the feature is dependent on the limits of size. You could always override this rule with a node in the past, but now, as of the 2009 standard, we have a symbol that will do the trick. It is the independency symbol. On this drawing, the independency symbol has been applied to the 10 millimeter diameter shaft. This means that the form control of this feature is totally independent of the size limits. If the size limits are met with a measurement that ignores form variation, like this two point micrometer measurement, great! But be careful! If the limits of size are not controlling the form, you better make certain something else will. On this drawing, the runout tolerance is not only locating the feature, but it's also controlling the circularity and straightness of the feature. So when do you go for this independency symbol? Well, my rule is that you should really consider it when the length exceeds five times the width or diameter of the feature. This is because rule one may become impractical where a tight size tolerance has been applied. Just one more of the new symbols in the 2009 standard. I'll see you next month.